My name is Rob Dickinson. I'm the um, founder and the creative director of a company called Singer Vehicle Design. And we're based here in the San Fernando Valley, close to Los Angeles. And we restore, modify, and rebirth old Porsche 911s. I fell in love with the Porsche 911 in August 1970 on vacation with my parents in the south of France. I was five years old and my father, we were chugging along in our VW Beetle down south near, near Bézier on the A9 auto route and my father told me to look over, over my shoulder that this strange car that was approaching very quickly. And I, I watched this car approach with this big smiling happy face with its lights on and I watched it roar by and the rear visage was very angry and the front was very happy and I remember I was captivated from that point that I was, I was very much um, gripped and fascinated, haunted, just mesmerized by this odd car. And of course we were in a Beetle which had, a, had obviously had a, a lineage to this car as well so there's more fascination from, from that level. And I, I, so my love of cars was already percolating at that age but my love of 911 started in 1970 and I, my, my, the idea to have one as soon as I could at that age was you know, it was, was palpable. The 911 has, has been uh, the only important car in my life since 1970. It's incredible, conservatively, teutonically developed character, especially the air-cooled 911s have a lot of commonality from 1963 or 64 when they came out to 1998. They are much loved because of their duality. They, have, they can be a sports car, but they can be a family car, they can be every man's car, they can be the only car you really ever need. Uh, the fact that they're the singularly the most important sports car from a motor racing point of view that's won every rally, every important motor race on planet Earth, unlike any other car on planet Earth. And the fact that they are such good companions as cars. I went to art college when I, when I left school and did a, a course in general art and design just because I didn't want to get a job, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I learned at the art college in Great Yarmouth that there was a course in Coventry which specialised in automotive design and the idea of being a car designer sounded fun. I got accepted onto that course uh, in 1984 and did two years of that course and then was pretty sure that I didn't want to be a car designer because unfortunately I had picked up a guitar. And uh, the idea of being a rock star was far more attractive than being a car designer. I formed a band called The Catherine Wheel and we made a bunch of records and did a, toured the world throughout the uh, 1990s. In 1996 I sa I'd saved enough money through my strumming to buy a Porsche 911 in England and I bought a, a 1987 big bumpered 80s 911 which I loved and then I started to fall heavily in love with the early 911s, the pre-1973 911. And then I sold my, uh, my 87 for a 1973 911, which I then spent a huge amount of money restoring to original specifications, absolutely back to original. Very, it was a rare car. It was a 73 2.4 S, of which there are only 12 left in, in, in right-hand drive versions left in England. But as soon as the car was finished and it was beautifully back to its pristine original condition, all I wanted to do was hot rod it. All I wanted to do was make the engine better and improve the brakes and improve the... Sp and I, could, I knew I couldn't really do it with this car because it was too original, it was too important a car. So when I moved to America, I sold it and I was able to uh, indulge myself in what, then, what I s then saw as my ultimate 911, which was to take an old late 60s or early 70s, early 911 and imbue it with some road racing vintage racing chic for want of a better term. I wasn't interested in doing a, a 1973 Carrera RS replica. I wasn't in, interested in doing a kind of homage to anything else. I wanted to do my own, what I called a cafe racer. Because I knew I'd be poncing about Hollywood in, in it, trying to pretending to be Steve McQueen and potentially taking it to a racetrack every, every now and again. So it was more of a fashion statement almost than a racing car. But of course, I autocrossed the car. I took the car to Willow Springs, our local track around here, and I and used the car a lot. It was my daily driver. And um, it had the feel of a late 60s, early 1970s road racing 911. Um, had a tougher stance, no spoilers, I didn't want any spoilers on the car. And this, this car, which is a very famous car in, from England called 2BRX, which is a 1968 short wheelbase 911, often referred to as a TR, uh, which was a, a car that was taken off the production line and, and, and given a lot of sports purposes parts. I was just 
inspired by that, the stance of this car, the simplicity of this car, the stark minimalism of this car. No spoilers, no ugly chin spoiler, no ducktail, no big spoiler at the back. So my, my little 1969-911 became this little hot rod, this stripped out, super lightweight, barely 900 kilos. I put a big en three litre engine in it, um, I changed the gearbox, we put big Fuchs tires, wheels and tires on the car and gave the car a real muscular stance but uh, it was painted this lovely classic uh, Porsche color called Bahama Yellow and it got a lot of attention from people who wanted to buy it and people who wanted to be photographed in it and girls that wanted to be my friend in it and and that idea mutated into taking my car, which was very much a hot-rodded, my own vision of my own personal car, and taking a lot of those design cues and turning the volume up to ultimately blueprint what we do now with uh, here at Singer. I am still a member of a, a club called the R Group, which is uh, which was founded by Freeman Thomas, who's the the very celebrated VW uh, bug and Audi TT designer, who's now working at Ford great friend of mine who started this club for hot rodded sports purposes early 9-11s in 2001. My car became quite uh, well known in the R Grouper and uh, as I enjoyed being part of this clique if you like, this team of guys who, who, who liked, had similar tastes, I started to see these expensively executed hot rods. My, you know, my, my little car was done kind of on the cheap, but a lot of people started to show up to the, to the yearly meetings of the R Group in very expensively uh, restored early 911s which had big engines shoehorned into them and, and spectacular brakes and some of these cars were better than others and I happened to drive a particularly well executed version of this car and was just blown away at that how refined and uh, sophisticated an early 911 could actually be and then uh, that was part of the the germination of this idea that these cars don't have to be rough and ready hot rods with limited appeal the 911 is so evocative. The, uh, Steve McQueen references are so, are, are so uh, important for the vibe of this car and everything that surrounds this car is important. If someone was to restore an, uh, a 911 in such a way where it had a wider attractiveness for a wider audience, you could probably uh, appeal to that audience and actually make a business out of it. I started to see that in the combination of how my car was, was reacted to in the taste making world of Los Angeles in terms of its aesthetics and then I'd got in this car where where the engineering had been had been well sweated and I thought well put these two together there's some fun to be had and, and, and maybe some some business to be done and that's that was the thought. As we were discussing the ambitious nature of the project I was talking to a lot of my uh, Porsche friends here who have shops here in, in, in on the west coast of America and someone suggested that we call our development mule Norbert, after Norbert Singer, um, who's singularly the, the most important man at Porsche from a motorsport perspective. He has basically been responsible for all of Porsche's motorsport successes, or most of them in the, in the last 50 or 60 years. And I, didn't, I thought that sounds a bit strange, Norbert, but I like Singer, and I thought, well, Singer, well, I'm a singer too, because I was a singer in the band, and the sound of the engine was, to my ears, was always music. So I thought, well, that's a good, good a name as any to call the company, we'll call the company Singer. Each Porsche we work on is owned by the customer. We basically sell our services. We don't sell customers' cars per se. Their car arrives, it comes through our doors as a 1990 to 1994 Porsche 911 964 model, which uh, we prefer to work with. These cars are usually have 150 to 200,000 miles on them. They're tired, they're creaky, they've, they've given their best, and they are usually descending into a questionable final life. So we feel that there's some uh, duty-bound integrity for us to rescue, rescue these cars a little bit and breathe new life into them. But when they arrive, they are stripped to the metal. Uh, everything is taken off the car. That spare metal is then has an e-coated e primer put on it to prevent rust, and then it goes over the road from our facility here to our fabrication shop, where the car is uh, strengthened um, and prepared and modified in preparation for its carbon fiber bodywork. Uh, we also do a lot of metal alterations inside the car to, to make the interior look how we want it to look. The process takes about four or five weeks. Then the car goes down to another of our great partners, Aria Group in Irvine. They do all our uh, body preparation and paint. 
all our carbon and composite work. Again, takes another five weeks. And then the car arrives back here at Singer as a painted shell. And then we spend the next 12 weeks screwing the car together with the finest components we can find to improve the car's performance, its functionality, its cooling, its air conditioning, its suspension, its brakes, its engine, its gearbox, its interior using as many Porsche parts as we can. We use a lot of Porsche Motorsport parts on the suspension and the brakes. Obviously, we save a lot of weight through our modifications. We, we take about four, 450 pounds off the weight of the car that we start with. We add generally add at least 100 horsepower with the, with the Cosworth developed engine. You know, we make the car turn, steer, stop as good as it possibly can. Um, we take a lot of the rubber out of the car that Porsche had to inst put into the car for uh, refinement's sake. We, generally try and improve every aspect of the car while honoring everything that is Porsche. We hate custom cars really here at, the, here at this shop, I, although I don't, hate's a strong word, but the idea that our car might be seen as a custom car makes me feel nauseous. Our car needs to be seen as a Porsche through and through. We only put uh, Singer badges on our car for the sake of clarity, clarifying exactly what this car is. This is a, a Porsche 911 that's been touched by us. Quintessentially, it's a Porsche 911, and it always will be. And it uh, hopefully is some kind of line in the sand as to how good an air-cooled 911 can be that isn't a race car. It's very easy to build a thinly disguised race car for the road, but that's not something we're too, too interested in doing. So we want to do a, a properly rounded car, which is properly usable, that can be driven to the office on a Monday and driven to the track at the weekend, and has that uh, wonderful duality, but just fine-tuning the focus a little bit. We have access to amazing materials, the, uh, the sand deadening in the car is a super lightweight materials developed for silencing private jets and uh, obviously something that we feel fits the ethos of our car in terms of having it that you never see it it's there doing a job it's cutting edge it's functional for Dr. Porsche always said that beauty comes through function and we fully believe it I'm not a fan of unnecessary embellishment I'm a big fan of of materials doing their job quietly and, and, uh, and in an understated way. I have to remind people that there's a huge amount of uh, expensive carbon fibre under the paint because most people forget but that's we're using carbon fibre purely as a functional incredibly strong incredibly light material and same with the sound deadening it's it just does its job very well and suits our our mantra if you like. The 964 for us is the high water mark of the air-cooled 911 chassis. As you probably know, the 911 was suspended by torsion bars up until the late 80s. Um, and when the 964 model came along, there was a almost an 80% redesign of the monocoque. Porsche radically changed the front suspension, um, allowing really good damping to be put on the car. Uh, they introduced ABS braking to the car and he introduced a sublime power steering system to the car. The rear of the car stayed true to the early 911 with semi-trailing arms and uh, although it had coilover springs and not torsion bars. The later 993 model, which was the last of the line of the air-cooled cars, had a very sophisticated multi-link rear suspension which was designed to curb some of the oversteer excesses that a 911 naturally has, which is fine in its own way, but uh, for, for purists it's not a particularly transparent car, it's trying to help you out, whereas uh, for us a 911 needs to wear its heart in its sleeve. If you get it wrong, you've got a big weight over the back of the car and it's, you've got to treat it with respect. So we, we liked the sense that the 964 had a sophisticated suspension setup that allowed us to put very good dampers on the car, but also was still very firmly rooted in classic 911 suspension, but just enough technology to make the car not feel like an antique. Uh, so power steering and ABS brakes, just enough modernity in the platform to make the car relevant for the 21st century without it feeling too modern. And of course you take 400 pounds weight off that car and add 100 horsepower, you'll start to get down to the very marrow of the bone of why that chassis is so good and that's uh, you start to test that chassis and that chassis is, is well capable of, of, of handling that upgraded performance.
This is, you know, the, the air-cooled 911 engine, this beast that, that we love so much, really is an icon, and, and uh, Porsche had to stop developing it for all sorts of reasons. But there's a lot left on the table, and we'd like to try and access it. Our, our work so far has been pretty safe, engineeringly based rebuilding of the standard engine to better tolerances and, and, and greater volumes, uh, which we're very proud of. They're, they're fabulous engines, but the sense that, we, that it can be taken to one final level is tantalizing to us. Our customers are very interesting people. As you can imagine, a lot of them have very eclectic car collections. We can build restore their cars in such a way that they feel that they're getting something that is akin to a, a Savile Row suit that is just for them and that's I love that they have they're over Ferrari 458s they're over Lamborghini Gallardos they're over, they want something that is genuinely exclusive I think and they also want something that goes down the road particularly well I mean I, I, our goal was to work on on cars that were beautiful screwed together like a Swiss watch but also went down the road like the best air-cooled 911 you'd ever driven and that's where we we sweated blood blood and tears on all those three aspects of the car but the, the final final one is i think the most important and i think that's where we've had some success and that we've had some pretty important taste makers on you know chris harris and, and top gear and um, jay leno here in the u.s and various other people have said very nice things i, I came into this having had pretty horrible experiences when people have done things, built things for me, or had an extension on a house that usually goes terribly badly, or you have a house built it goes badly. I wanted our company to operate differently to other, other companies. I wanted to over deliver, and not just on the product, but also on the experience. We keep our clients extremely updated throughout the process. Every two weeks there's a, there's a big update. They know where they stand, where their car is, they, they become invested in it in, 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 a, in an emotional sense we hope because we certainly are and we want them to be too and then of course when the car's complete our job really starts in looking after that client and that car once it's out there in the world so um, if anything breaks on their car and it's our fault we fix it there's no there's no argument we have a technically you have a warranty but really we want to understand these cars for the rest of their lives we want to know where they live how often they've been serviced and maintained again using blueprints from heroes like mclaren i know mclaren operate in a similar way with their f1s they know exactly where their cars are at any point in uh, in the world and uh, uh, who's driving them and how they're being used and, and we'd like to track every car that we've worked on and, and for the sake of provenance and, and everything else. There's so much opportunity within everything with all the fabulous cars that Porsche have created to breathe some new life into many different models. There's so many cars and so little time it's only time and money. We hope that um, Porsche uh, see what we are doing as being as being respectful to their brand and uh, hopefully being supportive to their brand. We we certainly feel that way. Porsche is uh, is incredibly important to everybody at this company in in terms of affection and respect and everything we do here is to celebrate what this magnificent company have done. Um, the amazing engineers that have produced and designers that have produced these these cars, the the incredible honesty behind these cars, the incredible efficiency and it's all about celebrating that and uh, so I, I would I would hope that there's some um, sensitivity and, and some uh, Porsche for that. I just w knew I had to do this and I knew if I didn't do it someone else would do it. It's not a revolutionary idea taking an old car and injecting it with some new stuff and polishing it up a little bit and Da -da. You know, it's not, it's not a revolutionary idea, lots of people have done it, um, especially in this country with Mustangs and, and, re and Resto Mods as they're called over here. I don't think any company has been crazy enough to do what we attempted to do in such a cross the board, spectacularly over the top way. And I knew that the car was possible to take a, a, a 1990s 911 and make it very, 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 very special. It's great to feel that a, that a good idea well executed, patiently, actually had, you know, actually resonated with people. It's an incredible, incredible feeling.